Hey everyone, this is Nick and we're already in October, which means that it's time for a new release of KDE Plasma, this time version 5.23. And if you were expecting a revolution in how you use your desktop, that's not the release for you. 5.23 continues the trend of quality of life updates, small features and incremental improvement. Speaking of incremental improvement, let's talk about how our sponsor can help you improve yourself. Okay, so this video is sponsored by Skillshare and if you've been on YouTube for more than 10 minutes, you probably already know what Skillshare is. They're an online learning community which has courses on virtually every single topic that you might want to learn, whether it's improving something that you already know or learning something entirely new. Now, personally, I've been using Skillshare to improve the video quality of what, what you're watching right now. Basically, check out this before and after. This is one year prior to this and this is now. I think the results speak for themselves, and I used a course on better film lighting, a course on color correction in DaVinci Resolve, and general camera handling courses. But if you want to learn something else, not camera or video related, there are courses on everything. On Linux, for example, there's plenty of that. Now, creating your account is free, but if you want access to all courses and all chapters, you'll need a Skillshare Premium subscription, or you can also just click the link in the description. If you're one of the 1,000 first person to click it, you'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare to start learning what's interesting to you. Okay, as always, let's begin with what has changed on the desktop side of things. And the first big thing for 5.23 is the Breeze theme redesign. Not for the Plasma desktop and its widgets, but for the applications themselves. The new theme has been long in the making and was released in small increments, notably with the unified title bars and toolbars or the small rounded corners in the menus. And now the rest of the interface gets changed as well. Well, it's not a major groundbreaking change and at first glance I think most people would be hard pressed to tell the difference. In news though, it does really feel different. Everything has a more polished edge to it, it's less flat, with more gradients, more shadows, in a way, it kind of reminds me of the new Elementary OS theme. The highlights and depth are more pronounced and the elements feel more tactile, like they're ready to be interacted with and not just painted on a sheet of paper. Personally, I welcome the move away from flatter styles. I like gradients, highlights, depth and shadows and I kind of miss cuomorphism, man. Scroll bars have been made a bit bigger to make them easier to interact with. There's a new spinning gear when you're waiting for something to happen and when you open a widget that touches the panel's edge, you'll see a highlight effect as well. Widgets also will use a blurred background instead of being either opaque or transparent. The right-click menu now uses a nicer highlight for elements on hover, not just a solid color, which looks pretty good. Unfortunately, that style isn't reused in source views like Dolphin sidebar or in the system settings. The changes also affect Breeze Dark, and I feel they give this dark variant a lot more contrast and depth as well. To complete this, windows won't be transparent when you move them or resize them out of the box, but the translucency effect is still here if you prefer it this way. All in all, the theme looks nice and polished and I like it a lot. I like it enough that I'm pondering using it instead of Lion once Manjaro gets the 5.23 update. Well, that is after I work on the how I customize my desktop video that I'm planning for October, of course. On top of that theme, KDE 5.23 introduces accent colors. This is a feature you could already use in Elementary OS or Zorin OS, with a choice from a few colors to replace the default blue. You could do it previously through the color panel of the settings, but it was cumbersome to try and find the place or the color that you actually needed to change. Now you get a nice selection row in the colors tab with predefined colors, but you can also use a color picker or set up your own. It works really well and it's a nice way to change how your desktop looks in a pinch. I wish there was an option to grab the dominant color of your wallpaper and use that as well, but I would be surprised if it didn't come in the near future. The kickoff menu also has received a lot of improvements. On top of the code base receiving a major overhaul to fix many, many bugs, it also performs better and opens faster, which is kind of important for a menu, so kudos for that. It also gets a few new features. First, you can view apps in a grid or a list, in the favorites and all the categories of the menu. You can also pin the menu to the screen if you want to have it always up, and in that case, pressing the super key will dismiss that menu. You can also configure the power and session action buttons and decide to show the captions or not. Touch users can also now long press on the menu to show the context menu. Now, there are a lot of smaller desktop-related changes as well. 
For example, KDE Plasma has a tablet mode that I just couldn't figure out how to enable on non-touchscreen devices. But in that mode, the system tray icons are made bigger so they're easier to touch. When a notification pops up, you can use Ctrl plus C to copy its contents to the clipboard, and this clipboard now remembers 20 items, and it has an option to only keep what you explicitly copy and not keep the selected text that you could paste using the middle mouse click. The global menu is supposed to have a more menu-like appearance, but I can't say I found it looked very different, especially since the menu header doesn't use the new highlight style from Breeze. You can also disable IPv6 in the connection settings if you want to, and Plasma now shows you more information about the network you're connected to, including the speed. And the audio volume applets now will differentiate between apps that are playing audio and apps that are recording audio. So like I said in the intro, there is nothing really revolutionary in terms of how you will use your KDE Plasma desktop. But the new theme and the accent colors make it less intimidating to customize for beginners and will make the desktop look a bit nicer out of the box. Now in terms of the system settings, there also have been a lot of smaller improvements. Hey, it's KDE. Were you expecting a new release without new settings? The feedback page that lets you give some optional telemetry to KDE developers now shows a history of what you chose to send so you can know exactly what you sent. When changing your display settings, you'll now get a timer to let you revert the changes if they don't fit, which is always useful. On the night color page, you get a small privacy warning telling you that it uses geolocation using a third-party service. The most important change though is in the search feature of the settings. Previously, you could only search for the name of the categories and some elements like the tab names or the entries in the desktop effects lists. They added a lot of keywords this time around to make that search more useful. For example, looking for scale didn't return the compositor tab previously that lets you change the scale method for Windows. It should make navigating these settings a bit easier. Discover the App Store for KDE is also now faster to load, which is nice, because it used to be really slow. It will also show you the source you'll use to install an application directly inside of the install button. Now, as with every new release of KDE, we also get good improvements to Wayland support. Screen rotation now benefits from a new animation, for example. The system tray will tell you if something is recording the screen and will let you cancel it if it's undesired. Touchpad gestures have been improved and are now one-to-one. -one, and support for integration between X Wayland and Wayland application is much better, with support for the middle click paste and drag and drop between the two. Virtual desktops are now also remembered on a per activity basis, just like on X.org, and the task manager and the mouse cursor will now show feedback when launching an application. On that note, that little bouncing application next to your mouse cursor really feels disconnected from the movement of the cursor itself. It's something that probably should receive a little bit more attention. Finally, not specifically related to Wayland, we have a rewritten present Windows effect, which feels smoother and looks a bit more polished, and the multi-screen layouts are now kept between X11 and Wayland sessions. So, as has been the case for KDE Plasma in the past two years or so, this new release doesn't reinvent the Plasma desktop. It adds quality of life improvements, performance improvements, and smaller new features. It might not be as exciting as a big redesign of the workspaces thing, for example, like what GNOME 40 did, but Plasma doesn't really need to do that. Plasma has always been a base upon which you build your own desktop experience, and their role is to provide the features and the settings that let you do that as efficiently as possible. And 5.23 is doing just that. It lets new users get to grips with customizing the desktop more easily and have a nicer experience out of the box with the new theme, the accent colors, and the improved search in the settings. It also lets power users do more with additional configuration options and preferences, and it keeps working on the transition to Wayland as the future of the graphics stack on Linux. And as an incremental update, there is really no reason not to apply it. If your distro offers this update to you, there's really no reason why you shouldn't. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about them by now, they are based in Valencia, Spain. They make Linux desktops, laptops from all form factors, all keyboard layouts, they ship worldwide. If you need a new Linux device, just check them out. I only use their stuff nowadays. I left a link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't stay to like and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments. You can also watch all of my stuff on Odyssey if you prefer. And if you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, and you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!